Welcome to another what I watched in the last month video and this is for the month of March I am sitting on the couch where I watch movies and binge watch TV shows So that was pretty appropriate I have spent the last two weeks sick and I'm still on antibiotics I got tonsillitis and an ear infection and I'm still recovering from that So due to the fact that I was stuck at home resting, I watched a lot of TV I had planned to film other videos this month and if nothing else, I needed to at least get this video up because I truly do enjoy and look forward to talking about movies and TV shows. Please leave in the comments suggestions on what I should watch next month. Well, this month, April. I'm a little late this month. I do have plenty to talk about, so let's get right to it. First on my list is Fresh, and this is a movie that everybody's talking about right now. It is a 2022 thriller mystery that's currently on Hulu. The horrors of modern dating are seen through the eyes of a young woman who is battling to survive her new boyfriend's unusual appetites. It's about cannibalism. Very disturbing. But it doesn't get too graphic, so it's not as disturbing as it could be. I appreciated that. It wasn't very visual. But the concept, the idea behind the things that are happening in this film are upsetting. Although I did find the ending pretty satisfying, I still felt pretty sick to my stomach the whole movie and I think that this is a film that you definitely don't want to if you're gonna watch it definitely don't watch it while you eat I wanted to talk about it and watch it because I was curious and I feel like if you're curious it's worth watching but it's definitely not a film that I could suggest to most but going into something lighthearted, we have Turning Red. This is a 2022 Pixar comedy family film that is currently on Disney Plus about a 13 year old girl who is torn between being her mother's obedient daughter and the chaos of her youth. Plus, when she gets too excited, she turns into a big red panda. This felt like a very different Pixar film. It had like this anime style to it, which I thought was kind of cool. I like that it was about rebellion and trying to find yourself and be true to yourself and the struggle of being the perfect daughter, which I found relatable. But I still felt like the movie didn't stand out to me compared to other Pixar films. I think it was just as good as Luca and Soul, and I would put it in that category, but I wouldn't put it in the category of my favorite Pixar films that I like to rewatch, like Toy Story, Incredibles, Finding Nemo, Monsters Inc., Up, Coco. I think those are like the Pixar films that stand out, but I still enjoyed it for what it was. Next up we have The Atom Project, and this is a new Netflix film that just came out this month that is a 2022 sci-fi adventure. After accidentally crash landing in 2022, time-traveling pilot Adam Reed teams up with his 12-year-old self for a mission to save the future. I actually really loved the dynamic between Ryan Reynolds and his 12-year-old self, and I thought the kid, the actor, did a great job. I do find the film overall forgettable, <laughs> but enjoyable. If you enjoy Ryan Reynolds' charm, then you should enjoy it enough. I went into it not expecting much and I actually was surprisingly satisfied for the most part, but I don't think it's like anything out of this world. Next we have Windfall, and this is a new film on Netflix that just came out this month as well, and it features Lily Collins, Jesse Plemons, and Jason Segel, and it basically only has like three people in the whole film. Oh, four actually, but mostly three people. It's one of those films that kind of takes place in like one setting or one place the whole time. A man breaks into a tech billionaire's empty vacation home, but things go sideways when he arrives with his wife for a last minute getaway. I was really looking forward to this film. I had high expectations. I love Jason Segel. I thought, ooh, a new Netflix thriller. And honestly, this film just really didn't impress me. I was underwhelmed and a bit disappointed because I just, I was expecting more. I, I wanted more. It definitely had a lot of dialogue in it and I did enjoy the conversations and I did enjoy like I guess the characters but I just felt like I wanted more to happen and I felt like it was a little too slow and underwhelming and I don't know I just really wanted more. So we watched the other night Phoenix Rising and I just need to talk about this. It is an HBO Max docuseries that's two parts it's like two episodes and it just came out it is about Evan Rachel Wood and it was like, I guess, created by her to tell her story about the abusive relationship that she had with Marilyn Manson back when she was 18 and he was 37. It's about the manipulation, the toxicity, the abusiveness, the grooming, all the aspects of how things kind of progressed in their relationship. And oh my God, it is a journey. She is roughly my age and I remember being like, maybe 17 or 16, when I first ever found out that she was dating Marilyn Manson. There's a music video called Heart Shaped Glasses 
that I was obsessed with and I thought she was so cool for being a part of it and knowing what I know now after watching that docuseries is like whoosh, like I, I it just really opens your mind and if you have any idea what I'm talking about or you want to know more I highly suggest checking it out so I want to take a break from films and go into some TV shows that I saw this month um, I did watch the first episode of Moon Knight can't say much yet because it's just one episode but it, it looks interesting I've been needing to watch the second season of Bridgerton haven't gone around to that yet let me know if you have I tried watching Inventing Anna and I saw like the first four episodes and then I just gave up like I just didn't care and then there's this show called Upload that I'm so mad about because the first season was so good that I'm so sad to say that the second season has been so boring and I don't know what happened I don't even want to talk about it it's too disappointing but I will talk about a show on Netflix that just came out this month called Pieces of Her. It is a 2022 thriller featuring Toni Collette. After a violent attack in a small town, a daughter begins to piece together her mother's dark past that brings hidden threats and deadly secrets. I thought this show was entertaining enough, but I wasn't obsessed with it. I love Toni Collette and I thought that she didn't really stand out in this show as much as I thought she would. Um, I think the daughter stood out more. If you enjoy thrillers and you are looking for something on Netflix to watch, I would I would say it's entertaining enough. But I am so excited to talk about this next show that's on Netflix as well. And I binge watched all four seasons while I was sick in this course of two weeks. And it's called Good Girls. It features Christina Hendricks, which I loved her in Mad Men. And basically it's about these three moms who are all desperate for money. So they decide to rob a grocery store but they don't realize that the grocery store is kind of like a sketchy business that's run by a gang. Now they have to pay back the gang, so they have to like work for them. And it involves like fake cash and turning or washing or cleaning fake cash into real cash. It is the female mom version of Breaking Bad. And I love it. There's this bad guy in the show called Rio. And he has this like chemistry with Christina Hendricks. And uh, I, I love all three of the main characters, the three women. I like the dynamic between them. I enjoyed the whole entire show. I thought it was great for binge watching. If you're looking for a show to just go through in two weeks, highly recommend Good Girls. It was a lot of fun to watch. I, I, I'm sad that it's the end. I want more. The next show that I fell in love with this month is called Hacks. And it is a 2021 comedy drama that is currently on HBO Max. I was able to binge watch it very quickly because it's just one season so far, but I am looking forward to the future seasons of this show. Gene Smart plays this Las Vegas comic who is basically in a mentorship with a 25-year-old comedy writer who is very entitled and the dynamic between them is very... kind of reminds me of Devil Wars Prada, but with the idea of like comedy instead of fashion. Love the dynamic between the two of them. And I just wanted to throw it out there because if you haven't heard of it or if you haven't tried to watch it and you have HBO Max, I highly recommend checking it out. The next show I want to talk about is a new show that just came out this month called We Crashed. It is a 2022 Apple TV series that features Jared Leto and Anne Hathaway and they're currently on their first season. But it's a true story about We Work, which is a workspace, office space, co-working company kind of didn't work out <laughs> that well in the end and it's kind of the story of how it came to be not as successful as maybe was expected i didn't really know much about we work it's still on the first season so every episode's coming out week by week so the next show is a western which is so weird because i don't even like western films or shows for that matter and this one is called 1883 it is a 2021 western on amazon prime and it's just one season and it features Tim McGraw and Faith Hill, who are a real life couple, but in the show, they are also a married couple. And their daughter, who is played by the actress, Isabel May, she's kind of the narrator and the main character, I would say, of the show. And apparently the show is a prequel to Yellowstone, but I've never seen Yellowstone, so I, I don't really know about much about that. It follows a family who flee poverty in Texas and embark on a journey through the Great Plains to seek a better future in Montana. This show, felt like an opera. It was beautiful and sad. <laughs> the ending is so heart-wrenching. I just found it so beautiful and I surprisingly really enjoyed it. The actress who plays the daughter, Isabel May, I I fell in love with her and I think she really like 
is what sold the show to me and what kept me watching. Ugh, the ending is just so sad. If you have watched it, let me know. Okay, so going into something lighthearted, is it cake? Is a new show on Netflix that I just have to talk about. It is this silly game show that all these bakers make cakes that look like things and then the judges just have to basically figure out what is cake or what is the thing that they're trying to make it look like. And then they slice the thing open and see if it's a cake and it's just, it is so dumb but yet so satisfying to watch and so surprisingly entertaining. I put it on one night to fall asleep to and then I ended up watching like an hour and a half of it so another show i want to talk about is called the worst roommate ever and it's another netflix series that just came out every episode is a different story about the worst roommate ever <laughs> if you love crime serial killers and murders and i think you would like this show <laughs> plus i like that it's like good for people who just are not interested in being invested for an entire season of one story it's just like little mini stories which i prefer so i can just watch an episode and then it's over and i can move on to a new story instead so going back into films we finally saw licorice pizza which is a 2021 romance drama that's directed by paul thomas anderson we had to pay six dollars on amazon prime to watch it because we couldn't wait one of the actors in the film like one of the main characters is cooper hoffman he is philip seymour hoffman's son which i thought was pretty cool and i loved him he was great and then bradley cooper was in this film which was really random and it was a very minor role too but like sure why not i don't even know how to explain what it's about a part of it has to do with the fact that there's this girl who's like around 25 years old and this boy who's like 15 and they kind of have this like strange romance that seems wrong but kind of also is seems right it's very weird they go on these like endeavors together and basically it's a very like free-spirited simple film the plot is very simple nothing crazy happens there's not like this big problem or this big like focus in the plot it's just kind of like a like a ride that i found to be very enjoyable again it's a very simple plot and simple film so there's not like a ton to say about it but i just i just enjoyed it the next film is called no exits and this is a 2022 thriller that is on hulu right now and it features a very small cast and it's a one location film which i love it's about a group of people who get stuck in a blizzard at a mountain rest stop a woman in the group finds a young girl who is kidnapped and is in one of the cars she doesn't know who the car belongs to from the people in the rest stop i think it gets very tense and exciting i love films that can pull off the idea of one location or even especially a small amount of people a very simple concept or even just a low budget film that can manage to be entertaining the entire time and that's what this film is i highly recommend it if you enjoy thrillers next up we have master and this is a 2022 thriller drama on Amazon Prime. It features Regina Hall and Zoe Rene and Amber Gray. And it's about three women who strive to find their place at a prestigious New England university that may disguise as something sinister. This is a film that has like an underlying message to it. And it has to do with the terrors of racism. And kind of, I guess, reminded me of Get Out in a way. But I think Get Out is a lot better. I think that this film was not that scary which I found a little disappointing. I like that there's a message behind it and I appreciated that and I totally understood what it was trying to do. I just wanted it to be scarier. <laughs> okay, next up we have Death on the Nile. This is a 2022 mystery crime that's currently on HBO Max and features Gal Gadot and a bunch of, a bunch of people, uh, Russell Brand. <laughs> and it is so boring. It definitely felt like it was based on a book. Nothing against books, but <laughs> it's a whodunit mystery. If you want a good whodunit, watch Knives Out. Knives Out is a good mystery whodunit style film, but this, or even Clue, but this film was just so boring. I, I'm sorry. I don't know. Next, we have The Lost Daughter, and this is a 2021 drama that is on Netflix and is directed by Maggie Gyllenhaal. It stars Olivia Coleman and Dakota Johnson is in it as well, and it's basically about a woman who's on a vacation in Italy, and she kind of starts to get like this fascination or like this fixation on this mother Dakota Johnson and her daughter. Honestly, not a lot happens. It's very simple, but it's emotional. And I thought it was actually pretty good. Not great, but that was pretty good. I think I, I think I happened to watch this film on a good day where I was able to pay attention because I think most days I wouldn't have had the attention span to be able to watch this film, but I did find it to be a little slow. I guess like uneventful, but yet I, I enjoyed it. So I don't really know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it was an Oscar nominated film. And speaking of Oscar nominated films, there are two other films that were nominated that we tried to watch 
and one of them was drive my car it is a three hour film that's in japanese and we watched the first hour and then we we couldn't do it it was just too long it's really hard for me to watch a film for three hours especially one in a different language and it was just so slow and um it's on hbo max if you're interested in watching it but we just couldn't do it and then there were the eyes of tammy faye this one's two hours long and it's in english it's on hbo max as well and i think we saw the first hour as well and then we just kind of like didn't want to watch it anymore not that it was bad i just i don't know sometimes you're just not feeling it and you don't feel like watching any more of a movie i will say from all the oscar nominated films that we've watched the one that won best picture is coda and i did talk about it in the last what i watched in february video i highly suggest watching coda if you have not seen it it is a beautiful film and it won best picture for a good reason i think so so yeah highly recommend watching that one if you haven't seen it yet okay we're almost there the next film is hellbender and this is a 2021 horror directed by the adams family which i didn't even know that was a thing it is a mother father daughter trio who make films together which is really cool the daughter zelda adams and her mother um are the stars in this film and they live together in the woods isolated and they they make metal music together and Basically, the daughter kind of meets another teenager, kind of starts to uncover that she has, I guess, witchcraft in her blood, and it's a lot about witchcraft. It's very weird and unique style of film and horror. It was filmed during COVID, which I thought was pretty interesting, and it's a very small, like, you know, not, not a lot of people in the film. It's a very small, limited cast film. You could tell it's like lower budget. It, it, it's really, really like wicked and strange. It's psychedelic, trippy visual effects. I liked it for being strange, but I don't think I necessarily loved it as a, it's not my style, but I still appreciated it for what it was trying to do, I guess. The last few films I'm gonna talk about are not new. They are old films that are really random and I'm just gonna throw them in here in the end because they happened. The first one's Nacho Libre because I love Nacho Libre and I love Jack Black and I know he's not for everyone, but if you love Jack Black or Nacho Libre, please comment down below and let me know because I just I've seen this film so many times and there's some parts of the film that I can recite by heart and I just It's just my it's like a happy film for me Like I just feel good. I just I'm so happy watching it that I just hadn't seen it in a while So I really wanted to watch it and it's on Netflix. So Why not and then Jeremy had this desire to watch this is the end which is a 2013 comedy that Features everyone in the world Seth Rogen James Franco Jonah Hill Danny McBride Michael Sarah Emma Watson Rihanna and it is just such a silly, stupid film of the end of the world. And, and the last one I want to talk about is Saturday Night Fever. Because why not? <laughs> because we had actually never seen this film before, which is pretty crazy. It's a 1977 musical dance disco film that features John Tavolta, and it's on HBO Max right now. And it is all about disco, and it's set in Brooklyn, New York, and Bee Gees is playing the entire time over and over again. It's super goofy and, you know, just sometimes you gotta watch disco movies. <laughs> Comment down below and let me know what did you watch in March? Are you looking forward to anything in April? Have you watched Batman yet? I still haven't watched Batman. Um, have you watched Bridgerton? Like, what is the thing that you're watching right now? Hope to see you before the end of next month. Toodaloo!